Okay, so let's take a look at the software on the device. So here we've got the home screens, which we can scroll through as you've come to expect on Android devices. If you haven't seen much about Android before, then uh, there's plenty of videos on the internet that you can check out. Now, as you can see, as we scroll through the home screens, we've got these little icons up top that show us which home screen we're at. If we do sort of a little uh, pinch on the screen, I'll say that, let's there we go. Um, we've got the ability to customize our home screens so we can add home screens. We can remove them by clicking the little X icon. We've also got the option to choose which uh, home screen we want as our main home screen by tapping the little home icon here. So if I tap home, I'm now taken to this screen uh, rather than this one that I would normally prefer as my default home screen. But if I come back out there, just do that little tap press the home screen icon again, press the home button, and that becomes my home screen yet again. We can scroll through or down from the top here to get our notifications. Now, being a pre-production unit, you can see it's uh, doing some reporting on issues that we've had with this device, but you've got shortcuts to your sound, your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, your data, or you can go straight into the settings menu from here. Going back very quickly uh, to the home screens, you've got the option to customize it by adding widgets. So loads of different widgets depending on what you've got installed, but you can simply select one, press and hold, and you can drag it to a home screen that has sufficient space. You'll be notified where there is one with space, so I could create a new one here, and there we go. I can go back and I can do uh, apps. I can do the exact same thing. I've got the ability to choose wallpapers, be it album art or live wallpapers that are animated. And of course, you can set images that you take on the camera as well. And then you've got different theme modes, which give a nice color mode throughout the uh, operating system that Sony have installed here as well. So got the home screens there I can go back to my main home screen. You can see I've got this little icon here. I can press that. Now you've got your running applications and then you've got these new little features here uh, which you can tap on and they open up little windows of little tools. Now there's lots of different ones that you can actually download from the Play Store uh, but you've got kind of like um, kind of like the equivalent of Samsung's pop-out window of their video player but you can actually have notes and a few things sort of going on the screen at once. So you've got a sound recorder there timer and then I can add more from the Play Store or other ones that have been installed. Okay so let's take a look at the settings. So let's first of all start off with about phone. We can scroll down here and you can see it's the 6 C6603 running Android version 4.1.1. There will be an update to Android version 4.2 uh, for this device. You can add all your various uh, different accounts, Google accounts, Facebook, corporate accounts, Evernote, Sony uh, network accounts, and much more. You've got a setup guide here. So if you're a first time user, there's a few uh, hints and tips and tricks to get you going. Uh, you've got backup and reset options uh, for Wi-Fi passwords and things like that. It's a nice feature that Sony sort of uh, have on here. You've got your language and input settings. Now, we've got another video dedicated to the language options, but you can change your menu languages, and you've got a vast array of languages available there for the menu, and you've got the same options when it comes to the keyboards. Uh, there's a whole array of different writing languages that you can use to select. And just to show you that in action, we can go into the messaging screen, and uh, we can start to type out a message. We've got an English keyboard here, but we can switch through using this button here to trigger the different keyboards and write in our preferred writing language. If we go back into the settings menu, uh, we've got features about Xperia here so that this is a Sony PlayStation certified uh, device, so you can play uh, P PlayStation games on the device. You've got Miralink technology, um, and that's to allow you to wirelessly share your Xperia Z screen with a uh, enabled television, most uh, commonly a Sony television. You've got power management options here. So one of the 
standout features of the Z is the fact that it's got a battery stamina mode, which is the opportunity to um, turn off and customize the settings, what happens when you press the power button. And the battery stamina mode uh, is expected to increase your battery life up to four uh, times. Uh, in standby mode because what it's doing is when you power the screen down it's switching off the settings that you choose but it would be looking to switch off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and things you wouldn't be needing your device to utilize when the screen is off to conserve power and then when you switch the screen back on the idea is that uh, those connections and things will switch back on. You've got storage, so there's 16 gig uh, of internal memory on this device. Now we've installed some apps and things on here, but it's kind of split down. You've got uh, just shy of two gig in phone memory, and you've got 10 and a half gig uh, in additional internal storage. So we've got 1.46 gig available from the phone memory, and then we've got 8.99 gig available. If this was a clean install, you'd have about 12, 12 and a half gig of the 16 gig available to you for storage of things but of course you've got the micro SD card slot on the side that support cards up to 32 gigabytes. So you've got your, uh, your main Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi settings, sound and display settings. In display you can um, turn off the mobile Bravia engine to perhaps conserve battery life a little bit more. You've got some of your uh, options for customization including the wallpaper, the brightness, sleep timer and font size so if you're a little bit uh, hard of sight you can change the size of the font or you can make it smaller if you prefer. So that's a look at some of the settings. We can uh, then go into the applications tray and as I say we've uh, installed some apps on here but as standard uh, it came installed with Google Chrome and a lot of the other uh, Google services including Google Search, Gmail, Google Plus, Navigation, Maps, Messenger. Sony have then installed the likes of uh, Music Unlimited, their streaming service, and they've uh, included an Office suite on here as well. They've got this Smart Connect, which uh, is designed to activate when you do certain things. So if you connect a set of headphones, it might start your music player. If you connect to television, it might um, sort of bring up uh, your file explorer, it's entirely up to you what you can do, it can be customized for different times of the day and switched on, you can add events and things like that, there's a whole host of different options that you've got there, we'll cover that in more detail in another video. You've got Sony car mode to make uh, for safe when driving, so you can add different things to your screen here to enhance uh, your usability when in a vehicle, so you've got location, media, settings, phone, just quick access and easier, clearer things to use. We can navigate back here and exit like so. You can customize uh, the menu structure in here, whether you want it in your own order, alphabetical, most used, recently installed. You can search for applications and you've got uh, more settings there in terms of uh, uninstalling, sharing things, so I can click share. Um, oh, unfortunately that's not working at the moment because we haven't got a mobile data connection, um, but lots of different sort of ways of customizing the menu a little bit more for you. So I'm going to customize and this goes back to your home screen, things like that. Taking a look at the phone dialer, you click in here, fairly straightforward, big on screen dialer. You can see your calls list. Now we haven't done any as yet on this device. You've got your favorites. You can synchronize your contacts. Now we haven't done that um, as yet. Add them. Got all your different sort of settings and options as you sort of come to expect on here. Let's take a look at the web browser. So we're just loading over Wi-Fi into the Clove website here. We can pinch and zoom um, in and out on the screen. We should also be able to double tap, there you go, slight lag there. You can zoom in and out like that. You can orientate the device in landscape or portrait mode. And if we sort of scroll through the page, we can play a video here. So this is a YouTube video. Just turn the sound right up for you.
Picture quality is superb, I'm not sure how well that's coming out on camera. The sound quality is pretty good as well. It doesn't really distort at high volumes and this is where the uh, speaker is. Um, it's not the loudest speaker I've heard um, but it's pretty good quality at the highest volume. One of the downsides to it is it where it's located. I think you can easily put your finger or your hand over it to muffle the sound. It'd be nice to have an additional speaker the other side or something to give that slightly better audio experience. Let me just demonstrate that a bit. So if I and you can see how it could be easy when you're holding the device to muffle the speaker. And I don't know how well it picks up, but like the directional sound because of it being just one speaker. So we can come out of that. So let's take a look at the camera then on the Xperia Z. So this is one of the standout features of this device. It's a 13 megapixel snapper and uh, it's got a lot to live up to. There's a lot of good cameras on the market now, including those on previous Sony devices. So there's no physical camera shutter button um, on here. You actually have to use the on-screen controls for that. So you can see up in the top corner we've got the scene selection here. It's in superior auto mode at the moment, which is an automatic mode for essentially detecting uh, the best settings for the uh, content that you are filming or taking a picture of. But you've got options such as normal burst, picture effect, scene selection, sweep panorama and front video. So you can see here you get some controls over the uh, balance the flash and then you can go into the full settings for uh, more detailed controls. You've got burst mode which uh, you get on a lot of cameras or you can have apps that do this um, but it's pretty quick on the uh, Xperia Z here so let's just give you a quick uh, demonstration of that if we can. Now if you heard that, in that short space of time it's taken 51 shots and that is a super quick burst mode. That's one of the standout features I think about this uh, camera. If you want to capture action you really can do it um, on here. I'm not saying you can't get other apps that won't do it on other devices but 51 shots is incredible. I mean, You can just see there our gallery is now going to be full of shots of uh, the backing board here. So, just come back out and then let's uh, look at some of the other things you've got here. So you've got picture effects. So I just give you a little different uh, play with effects when you're taking the picture. It's a nice touch. Some will love it, some won't like it. You've got some uh, a shortcut there to actually then go through to the options again. Got a fish eye there. Just a different way of taking the picture and giving it a little bit of a fun effect. You've got scene selection where you can control what you're taking a picture of here. So soft skin, uh, soft snap, landscape, night portrait. Uh, this is where you're in control a little bit more. You've got all the flash settings here including red eye reduction and fill flash. And then you've got more settings here including the actual resolution. You've got a timer. Touch to capture. where it's stored and so on. You've then got sweet panorama and as the name and uh, description suggests you uh, take shots panning across like so. You can have the uh, photo light on or off if you choose. You've got the front camera so it's a 2.2 megapixel camera here 
and there you can see you've got our video equipment but you've still got the same sort of settings not going to go through all of them a lot of them are self-explanatory that you can sort of see there on the screen we can then go to video camera so this then allows us to take video footage with the rear facing camera we've got the options of video light we've got all the other settings such as scene modes video resolution so you've got lots of control and one of the big things this is the first smartphone to have HDR uh, on the video that's thanks to Sony's technology and Exmor R sensors you've now got HDR on video the first device uh, to have this or first smartphone device to have this feature so you've got white balance image stabilization geotagging whether you have the microphone on or not you then got the ability to flick it around to the front facing camera and record video as well now we'll be doing some tests on both of these uh, cameras uh, in a separate video so that's really about it for the Sony Xperia Z. We're going to cover more features of the Z in more detail on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash clove technology. So be sure to check that out for more detailed footage of the Sony Xperia Z. Thanks for watching.